Okay, so how is everyone today? So what notable thing is happening tonight? Yeah. <laughs> Nothing of consequence, yeah. Nothing. So it's at, it's at 7, uh, the exam. And uh, the room you're supposed to go in is in the grade book in a grade called exam underscore zero one underscore room. Uh, please make sure you know where that room is. Um, don't try to just walk there for the first time tonight. That might not work out as well as you hope. Um, any questions about any, any of that? Yes? Not provided, uh, but you can bring your own as long as it uh, um, doesn't have the ability to solve any, equa any equations or plot anything or anything like that. But you'll need a calculator to the same extent that you'll you need a calculator for the quizzes, which is to say, not at all. <laughs> I mean, uh, there's a, there there was a few minor instances where it, where it could have been nice, like when you were solving one of those linear model problems. It was nice to be able to multiply four hundred times two thousand or whatever that other number was. Other questions? Yeah, you got to bring a photo ID. Mm -hmm. uh, you can bring something to write with, calculator, and you can bring a little sheet of paper that that is your reminder of which which exercises you're going to attempt to redo. But it can't have it can't have any. It's not a cheat sheet. It can only have this list of exercises. Other questions? Okay, the 16th, halfway through. Uh, so last time we were talking about um, transformations of functions uh, and we had construed it as being opposite day. So specifically, uh, I can, I'm about to move this pencil to the right. See it moving to the right there? Okay, good. So, so uh, just to remind you where, where we were. So these were called shifts. One, the transformation x transforms to x minus c is a horizontal shift of c units. And two, y transforms to y minus k is a vertical shift of k units. Okay, so for example, I could draw absolute value. then I could give you the following equation and ask you to draw the plot. So the equation is about uh, y plus 2 is equal to absolute value of x minus 1. Um, just ran out of red there.
Okay. So how how will uh, this plot look? Compared to that one. Right. So the plot is going to go down to and what else? Right one. To which even even at this point there's often some students who say down to. It looks like we're adding to to y. Why should it be that the plot is going down to? It seems to me that it should be going up to. Well, there is something that's going up to. What's going up to? Origin. Yeah, the origin, the coordinate system. This, this, uh, the axes behind it, they're moving up. So you can imagine holding the absolute value still, it is like you're, you grab the axis and push it up two units. That's what's really going up. So the, so the plot itself has the appearance of going down. So we're going to go uh, down 2 and right 1. So that green point right there is going to be right there. Okay. Any question about uh, this idea of shift? OK. <clears throat> so there's another kind of transformation that we need to be familiar with. These are called scales. The transformation x transforms to x divided by c is a horizontal scale uh, with a factor of c and 2, y becomes y over k is a vertical scale of factor k. So, so far, <coughs> So far, uh, we've got four combinations. We've got uh, it's, the transformation is either horizontal or vertical. And then it's going to be either a shift or a scale. <coughs> so I have a question. Uh, let's do this one. So again, with absolute value, OK. So suppose I mark out this output value of 1. Now what input do you have to provide so that you get the output of 1? One would work. What else would work? Negative one would also work. So you can see that by looking at these intersections. So you could plug in one to get output of uh, one, or you could plug in negative one. OK. So how about let's try and imagine what, what should this look like? And why? So y is absolute value of x divided by 2. How will this look? So at least according to the rule above, uh, which, OK, simple question. Which variable was played with? The x's were played with, right? You can see that the y's are not played with. 
So just, just the x's. Um, as a result, is this going to be a horizontal transformation or a vertical transformation? Horizontal. It's going to be horizontal because we played with the x variable. If we played with the y variable, it'd be vertical. Okay, then, of the, of the horizontal transformations, we have two varieties. We have shifts and scales. Is this one a shift or a scale? Scale. scale. Uh, because shift and scale are associated to ar arithmetic operations. A shift is add or subtract. A scale is multiply or divide. So because this is with x, it's horizontal. Because this is a division, it's a scale. So this is a horizontal scale. OK. Now, suppose that we want the output to be 1. So again, I'm going to mark, mark this output value of 1. Suppose we want the output to be 1. What input do we have to provide? That is to say, what x value do we have to provide so that the output will be 1? 2, right? Which is to say, we've got to go even further out than before. And similarly, there's the one on the left uh, at negative 2. So, the new picture looks like this. So it is like, it's like we, you might say, we grabbed hold of the absolute value, just grabbed it and stretched it out, and this is, this is what it looks like. Ah, but then, then often there's at least a fleeting thought, but wait a second, we're dividing by two, so, so shouldn't something be getting, getting smaller? It appears to me that something's getting bigger horizontally. So it's kind of coming down a little bit. I agree with that. Uh, but what is, what is happening is you can imagine that I pin down uh, this, and then now I'm going to take this axis and squeeze it, squeeze, like this, until I'll squeeze it until this input over here, and this input over here. I hold the red and squeeze this one and squeeze it until the twos line up and then let it spring back out and now it'll look like this. Interesting. Any question about this one? <clears throat> okay. Uh, how, about, uh, how about a purely algebraic one? So suppose that we're given y is f of x. My question to you is, well, what about, what would um, y over 3 equal to f of x plus 4 do? And I w what I want you to tell me is what it would do to the plot and I also want you to tell me what it would do to the coordinate system. So in the first place, please, just, I'll, I'll show you what I mean to respond, how, what it would do to the plot. So because of just that bit right there, because of that bit right there, that, that's telling us that there would be some kind of transformation. Would it be a horizontal transformation or a vertical one? Vertical. vertical. How can you tell for sure that it would be vertical? Because it's playing with the Ys. Okay, so, so that, that's vertical. Uh, then, of the vertical kind, there's two, there's, there's two possibilities. Is it a shift or is it a scale? scale? It's a scale. What tells you that it is a scale? The division, right? Multiplication and division are, are associated to scales. So, uh, the plot would undergo a vertical scale of factor 3, that means that the resulting plot would be, th would be 3 times as tall. 
and because of this bit, that's telling you about a transformation. So is, is this part that I'm pointing to right here, is that uh, a horizontal transformation or a vertical one? Horizontal, how can you tell it's horizontal? Playing with the x's, is it a shift or a scale? It's a shift. How can you tell it's a shift? It's addition. Good. So horizontal shift of how much? Nope. Negative four. Which is to say, so I'm going to say, I'm going to start using negative four. That means that it's moving to the right by negative four. <laughs> or if you like, it's moving to the left four. Okay, good. So then what does the coordinate system do? So, so this line, this is telling you uh, if, if you take, this line is telling you if you take the view that the coordinate system is staying still and the plot is moving. Now I'm going to say, let's take the view that the plot is staying still and the coordinate system is moving. So the coordinate system is also undergoing a vertical scale. What's its vertical scale? So it has to be the opposite of this one, but opposite in the sense of multiply. That is to say, what is the multiplicative inverse of 3? 1 over 3. And then the coordinate system itself is also going under, undergoing a horse, horizontal shift. But it has to be doing the additive inverse of this one. What's the additive inverse of negative 4? Four? 4. Okay, good. How about... How about y minus 1 is f of 2x. Again, the plot and the coordinate system. Okay, so what is this part telling us? Okay, good. Vertical shift one. And what is this telling us? Horizontal scale of how much? Of what? One half. horizontal scale of one half. One half. Why one half? Right, well on the one hand you could just take it from a, from a definitional point of view, right? So when it's division by C, it's C. So when you're, I guess, multiplying by C, like down here, it should be one over C. You can think of it like that. Uh, alternatively, alternatively, uh, what's happening is that you're, you're multiplying the x by something, which means that you're playing with the coordinate system. You're making the coordinate system twice as big. So here would be a nice prank. Right? You, could, you could, while someone's sleeping, you could take all of their clothes, say, and measure, the, measure, measure all of their, uh, uh, you know, all of the horizontal measures of their clothes and replace all of their clothes with clothes that are twice as wide horizontally. Right? Then, then, okay, uh, that would be just like, you know, su suddenly this person has, you know, become ex extraordinarily thin overnight, right? Everything's just all hanging off of them. Okay. So then that would be making, ma horizontally making the world twice as big. Okay. <clears throat> so, so that would it would be like it would be like that person has been horizontally scaled by half. Okay, then from the point of view of the coordinate system, uh, it is also undergoing a vertical shift, but it's doing so in the opposite sense. So negative one, and it's also undergoing a horizontal scale. 
of 2. Okay, and for those of you who are still not 100% okay with that multiply by 2, I'll remind you that um, instead of multiplying by a number, you can divide by its what? Reciprocal. And what is the reciprocal of 2? 1 half. So I could say that this is f of x divided by 1 half. So that now it really does look like I'm dividing by c and c is half. Any question about, um, about these things? OK. Well, so here's, here's one more kind of transformation we're going to single out. So um, if, we were to, if we were to take uh, this, this pin, and if we were to multiply the underlying coordinate system by 2, that would have the, that would have the uh, appearance of making the pin shrink. Like, whew, now it's half as big as it was, right? Amazing. And then, <laughs> and then if, uh, if we could multiply it by 2, you know, uh, uh, sorry, if we could, um, what am I trying to say? Divide the underlying coordinate by 2, coordinate system by 2, it would, it would make the pin really big, Woo, like that. So then <clears throat> what would happen if we multiplied the underlying coordinate system, the horizontal coordinate system, by, say, negative 1? I mean, it would flip? Yeah, it would flip like this. It would be pointing the other direction. So, so the easiest example that, that everyone is familiar with, uh, that, that probably you all had experience with today, is that uh, imagine, uh, well, let, let's back up just a little. Let's back up just a little bit. What if we took this room and horizontally we multiplied it by negative 1? then what all of us would find is that everyone who, everyone who writes with their right hand would suddenly be a left-handed person, and everyone who writes with their left hand would suddenly be a right-handed person if we could multiply the horizontal coordinate system uh, by negative 1. And so you, this you, you see every, every day, probably. I'd like for you to imagine yourself standing in front of a mirror in your mind's eye and hold up your right hand and look at the reflection in the mirror. What hand is the person in the mirror holding up? Their left hand. They're holding up their left hand, if you're holding up your right hand. And the reason that is, is that what a mirror actually does is it negates the, the, coordin the part of the coordinate system that's traveling away from you. So, so once, it, once it goes past the mirror, the, that's negated. So as a result, the person in the mirror is holding up their the opposite hand that, that you're doing. Okay, good. And, and what's also interesting is that until you really internalize that, until you really internalize that, a lot of people have difficulty imagining what side of their head that they part their hair on, you know, if you happen to part your hair. Because every time you look at it in the mirror, it's the opposite of what everyone else sees. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I have to think about that. Whoa! <laughs> All right. So, <clears throat> so uh, now I lost track. Uh, here, we, here we are. <laughs> Reflection. The transformation x transforms to negative x is a horizontal reflection. That is to say, over the y-axis and to y transforms to negative y is a vertical reflection reflection, that is to say, over the x-axis.
Okay. <clears throat> so let's, uh, would someone please remind me, what does y is square root of x look like? Right. So it's like half of a sideways parabola. like that. And then this point right here, that's the origin, because the square root of 0 is 0. OK, what would, <clears throat> what would this look like? <clears throat> Negative y is the square root of x plus 2 mhm mm so there'd be there'd be two separate two separate things are occurring so as a result of this what would occur Well, this would be this would be a vertical reflection, so it would it would go over the x-axis, so so it would flip this way. Okay, and then what does this one do? It'll it'll make the whole thing move to the left two units. So this point right here is going to move to the left two units. Oop, I started drawing it. It should be right here. So that point has moved. And then, that, that's the result of this. And then the result of this is vertical reflection. OK. <clears throat> this one's always a little bit disturbing. What about, um, what about, say, y is the square root of negative x? <laughs> well, remember the rule in our class is that all, all quantities are real unless explicitly stated otherwise. So we're still talking about reals. I have no idea what imaginary is. So, so in the movement from this equation to this equation, did we play with the y's? No. No. So it must not be a, must, must not be anything vertical. Did we play with anything? Yeah. Yeah, we played with the x's. So that means that it must be a, it must be a horizontal transformation. And then at this point, we have three different kinds of transformations. We have shifts, scales, and reflections. What kind of thing do we have here? Reflection. A reflection. Mm -hmm. And it will look like this. It's been, it is, it is like I took the red and flipped it over. Many students are very disturbed by this, which is why I specifically selected the <laughs> radical. So, so, concerning this one, where you are at a point of emotional comfort, uh, could you give the input 16 to this one? Yes. yes, and if you were to give the input 16, the output would be 4. How about this one? Could you give input x is 16 to this one? No. no, because in the end you'd have negative 16 in the radical. Could you give input x is negative 16 to this one? You could, because if, if you were to supply the input x is negative 16 to this one, 
then you'd compute, well, negative negative 16, that's 16, and then the square root of that is 4. Okay, interesting. Any question about this one? Every, some, there's always some students who need a little bit of convincing that what I did was not um, immoral. <laughs> Broke the rules. <laughs> okay, good. Uh, fine. So we can have horizontal uh, or vertical shift scales and reflections. And there's a there's a great many uh, kinds of um, transformations, but those are the only ones that we talk about in our class. Like some of the more interesting ones are, uh, you know, getting things to. Uh, be bendy, like you take the coordinate system and you kind of squish it so that, the, so that the grid lines are not all at right angles anymore, they're kind of squishy. Uh, but we don't talk about those. Okay, so here's one. <clears throat> about absolute value of x and I'd like for you to plot y is absolute value of negative x How will that one look? It'll be exactly the same. Because what we're doing, we're not playing with the y's, so it's not vertical. We are playing with the x's, so it's horizontal. And specifically, what we're doing is we're negating the x, so that means that we're doing a horizontal reflection. So that means that we're taking this red, we're going to pick it up, turn it over, and set it back down. And how will it look? Exactly like it did in the beginning. That's interesting that absolute value does that. Do all, do all plots do that? No, because the last one we did didn't do that, right? OK. That's interesting. Uh, how about So now I'm going to need three plots to get this point across. So can you remind me what um, the shape of y is x cubed looks like? A snake. A snake. <laughs> yep. Mm -hmm. So it's like a like a parabola, but someone twisted its left arm down. So something like that. So on this one, to the right, I want you to do y is negative x cubed. So that is to say, what are we doing from here to here? Horizontal reflection. So I want you to take this red one, grab it, pick it up, turn it over, put it down. So then, horizontal reflection of the cubic looks something like this. So is it the same as it was before? It's not the same, right? Not the same. Uh, now, on this one down here, 
I want you to plot negative y is x cubed. So what is it that I'm requesting for this one? In comparison to the first one, what is this one? It's a vertical reflection. Okay, so this, that means that this part, that part's going to flip up, and this part's going to flip down. <clears throat> so that uh, the end result will look like this. So what is, does the vertical reflection look exactly like the original? It doesn't. But something is the same. It's the same as the horizontal one, isn't it? So cubic has the neat property that uh, performing a horizontal reflection is the same as performing a vertical reflection. That's neat. So, so um, absolute value, absolute value has the property that a horizontal reflection is the same as doing nothing. And cube has the property that doing a horizontal reflection is the same as doing a vertical reflection. That's neat. So now we're going to single out, we're going to single out um, functions that have this property, these, these two properties. So this is called parity. Parity like even odd. So function f is called even when f of negative x is f of x for all x in the domain. Okay, so that's the algebraic condition for evenness. Geometrically, that means that uh, that y is f of x uh, is horizontally symmetric. So the example from the previous page that I drew was absolute value. So can someone give us another example? Parabola. Can someone give us a non-example? Function that is not even. Not even, not horizontally symmetric. Which one? Cube? OK. <laughs> that one's good. OK, so yes, yes, no. So you can see from the picture the horizontal symmetry. Uh, but I'd also like to point out, for example, for the parabola, what's the formula for uh, parabola? Y is what? X squared. And then the question is as well, what would we have to do to, to reflect it? What do you have to do to, to the variables? You negate the x, right? So have a look at this second equation that I just wrote. What algebraically could you do to it?
Well, you could go ahead and you could cancel the negative, right? Why could you cancel the negative? Because the exponent is even, right? The negative would square away, and you'd, you'd get exactly that equation. Okay, good. So two. Function f is called odd. negative x is negative f of x for all x in the domain. So now, those equations look similar. Uh, they are both asking what happens if you take the input and negate it. They're both asking that because they both, the left-hand side is, well, what happens if you negate the input, x? For an even function, that, for even function, that's saying, well, that's the same as not doing anything. If you negate the input, that doesn't affect the output. For an odd function, it's saying, well, if you negate the input, you negate the output. That's what must happen to an odd function. Uh, visually, what this means is that uh, a horizontal reflection is the same as a vertical reflection. Of y is f of x. OK, so then example 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 so what's an example of an odd function how about cube so that's the one that I offered first what's another one So on that, on that page where we wrote all those functions and say this is the this family and this is the that family and, and all of that. How about, uh, how about the reciprocal function? Is that odd? It is odd. Because notice, if you, were to, if you were to grab it, pick it up, and turn it over, then this side would be over there. But that'd be just like flipping this side up. And this side would be over here, but that'd be just like flipping that side down. So this is odd. Can, can someone give us a function that's not odd? Mm -hmm. x squared, yeah. OK, now, so that means that, yes, this one is odd. Yes, this one is odd. And no, this one is not odd. Now, I want to warn you a little bit about this, that so functions can be even, functions can be odd, and functions can be neither one of these. So. Uh, for example, that's just that's the same case with numbers. So, for example, um, eight is even. Thirteen is odd. Can someone tell us a number that is neither even nor odd? Zero is even. Zero, zero is even because what if I gave you zero M and M's and I said I want you to uh, make as many groups of size two as possible. How many groups of size 2 can you make if I gave you 0 M&Ms? 0, right? And then how many would, you, would be left over when you're finished? 0. So the fact that there are none left over when you're finished 
means that zero is even. Is this, is, is this, that's the same reason why 20 is even. If I say, if I say break these 20, this group of, this pile of 20 M&Ms into groups of size two, how many groups can you make? 10, and how many are left over when you're done? Zero, and the fact that there's none left over, that's why 20 is even. Zero is even. But what's a number that's neither even nor odd? <laughs> that's even. How about three and a half? Three and a half isn't even. It's not odd. Neither one of these. Functions can be <laughs> functions can be even. Functions can be odd. Functions can be neither. <laughs> 